The story begins when Kin Fong declares that today, 10 billion people on Earth are being forced into the world of mayhem. In this realm, demons abound, with demonic beasts running far and wide, and the gloom of death follows like a shadow. He speaks of killings in desperation and risings in the dark, questioning whether he will be able to go against the odds to reach the top of the world. The scene shifts to Sidia, in the Blue Star Dragon Country, where people walk on the road. Suddenly, the weather changes, and a person asks what is happening and why it is getting dark so suddenly. A lady shouts, questioning what that is, while Kin Fong, the boy, looks at her and then at the sky, asking what they are looking at, and apologizes for shouting as they look at the sky because aliens are attacking Blinger. And it is the end of the world, so they need to run. They say something strange is coming out of the sky, while Kin Fong sees a screen in front of him and asks, What's this? He questions whether everyone else can also see a screen like this in front of them and comments that it's not a physical entity. He wonders if it is a virtual imaging technology and ponders about the country whose technology has such advanced features. He touches the screen, which shows a notification, opening soon for Mayhem World. He asks if words are showing up. He receives another message, indicating that the world of slaughter Heaven Mayhem will be opening soon and able-bodied people aged 15 to 50 from all over the world will be teleported to slaughter Heaven Mayhem at the same time. Meanwhile, he receives another notification that it's a place where giant beasts are rampant, demons are everywhere, and various races coexist. It is full of killing and crisis, but also full of treasure and opportunities. Here, one can die at any time and gain eternal life. Some spotlights emerge from an alien plane and spot some people. While a boy with gray hair asks what's going on, a baby and her mother also notice, and the baby starts crying and calling her mother. The mother tries to calm her down. Kin Fong also notices and asks if aliens are really invading Blue Star. He looks around and questions, what the hell is this? They receive another message, stating that this is Blue Star's only chance for self-redemption, and receive a message wishing them good luck as global mayhem begins now. After a while, they receive a message welcoming them to Novice Village 911, with each village having an initial population of a thousand. Kin Fong falls down from the sky to that village, landing in a house. He remarks that this world is not very friendly, to allow someone to appear here out of thin air, and it seems that what that strange thing said about slaying the world is true. He receives messages indicating that his location is Novice Village, and a reminder that the novice cabin is blessed by the heavenly way. No one can enter without his contest, and resting in the novice cabin doubles the recovery speed of physical strength and energy. He states that from now on, the TN screen can be accessed, and asks what a TN screen is. It's like an interface in a game, and there is also a screen with personal information. He asks if the battle rating of 8, 9, 8, and 28 is one star, and questions, what's with this level? He suggests, first, Let's go to the public chat channel to see what the other people are saying, and clicks on the screen. He notes that he can't even click on the world channel, and asks if this means that after a certain condition is met, everyone, including other newbie villages, can communicate on this channel. A brown-haired lady asks if they all have been kidnapped, and if the government will come to their rescue for help. She states that somebody will help them. A little boy speculates that it's aliens. It must be the aliens who captured them for experiments, he points out. They all crossed over together, right? He has read this kind of novel, and he doesn't know which one of them will be the main character. Kin Fun observes many people's comments on the status screen. Huan Kong says he is a boxing fan and likes to train occasionally, so maybe that's why the index is higher. He notes that it seems the battle power is related to the four-dimensional index, and by raising the four-dimensional index, he can raise the battle power and have a higher chance of survival. He observes that now, most people are one star, with only a few individuals having reached the one star limit. From the data revealed by others, it is known that the average value of the four-dimensional index of ordinary people is 10 points or lower. He notes that his strength, agility, and physique did not reach 10 points, presumably because his physique is thin, so the value is slightly lower. He mentions that the highest energy index from what people have revealed so far is 13 points, which is less than half of what he has, and he does not know what this energy index is for, but it is really to his advantage. The status window notifies Kin Fun that he will now awaken his innate talent. 
Based on his four-dimensional index, he contemplates awakening his innate talent. The status window notifies that innate talents are divided into nine ranks. F, E, D, C, A, S, SS, and SSS. The F level is the weakest, and the SSS rank is the highest. It points out that SS rank and above talents are of a unique class. The status window asks if he would like to awaken his talent. He clicks on yes and states that, of course, he has to choose yes. Suddenly he is transferred to another place and sees many balls around. He contemplates transferring to another stranger's place and wonders what these balls are for. Based on his years of experience reading fantasy novels, he thinks that balls of light must have something to do with awakening talents. He asserts that a powerful talent must be the most special ball of light, and he needs to find it. He observes a ball coming and hitting him, striking his belly, and then disappearing. He asks what it is. The status screen notifies him, congratulating him on the awakening of his SSS rank talent, Endless Extraction. It explains that with Endless Extraction, he can activate extraction on all targets and get unexpected effects. He states that it's a unique SSS rank innate talent. He contemplates unexpected results. Finding the explanation needs to be more specific. It seems that he has to find a chance to experiment to know the effect. The status window notifies him that the Newbie Village Talent Awakening is complete, with 787 people having awakened F-Rank Talent, 194 people having awakened E-Rank Talent, and two people having awakened C-Rank or Higher Talent. He observes many people's comments about their awakening. He notes that most people awaken F and E-Rank Talent, with less than 2% of the number of people in the New Village having awakened D-Rank Talent and he possesses an SSS-ranked talent, which is extremely rare. He wonders about the two people who have awakened above C-rank talent besides him, who the other one is, and what level of talent he has. He speculates whether the other person will be at the SSS level like him. He sees Luke Schwann's comment, stating that he has awakened a C-rank talent, magnetic control. Another person comments that magnetic control sounds awesome, and someone else asks if he will become like Magneto. Another person suggests that Leuk Xuan's boss should take him with him, as he will work for him from now on. A girl says, this little sister also wants to follow him. Kin Fong sees people commenting and thinks C-level talent is so sought after. He considers that if he reveals this exaggerated SSS-ranked talent, he is afraid that when the time comes, it will not be met with flow, war, and applause. After all, in this bloody world full of killing, he considers that SSS rank talent ability is his biggest reliance and trump card and must not be exposed. The status window notifies that from this moment on, he can leave the cabin and enter the novice village, and in 10 seconds the novice test will begin. It notifies that those who fail to meet the standard will be eliminated. The status window notifies how to upgrade, hunt all kinds of beasts, demons, and monsters to get energy from them for upgrading. Weapons for novices are now available to equip, please check. He remarks that this Tandal system screen of light has no physical form, yet it can store physical objects. How amazing! He takes out a sword from the system window. The system notifies that a novice short sword has an attack power of plus two, a rusty short sword, a must-have item for every novice, and an zero-grade item. It explains that attack power is measured against the strength index, and one point of strength can increase one point of attack power. He inquires about the attack power of two and suggests they give it a swing. After using it, he comments that it's not bad at all. After swinging it merely two, three times, he feels like he can easily kill a bull with this novice short sword and asks if that is the effect of two attack points. He speculates that if this sword gets upgraded to 10 points, 20 points, or 30 points, it will be unimaginably powerful. He then asks how he can upgrade it and decides to try his innate talent on this sword. The status screen notifies that the innate ability is being used for endless extraction, powering up his sword. The system notifies him that endless extraction is booming, and he has extracted the rust and residue from his novice short sword. His novice short sword has transformed into a fine steel sword. With the refined steel sword having an attack power of plus five, a grade one item. He remarks that just one use of his talent can transform a novice short sword from grade 0 to grade 1 and increase its attack power to 5 points. He decides to use it again to see the effects. The system window notifies that the innate talent is being used for endless extraction, 
but this time it failed as the target quality was too low and the extraction limit had been reached. He comments that, of course, there are limits, and if he could actually endlessly upgrade and have infinite extraction, then he would be a bug. At least for a novice, he uses his sword and asserts that his weapon is way better than everyone else's. He hears some voices of people. One person says, this is unbelievable, when another remarks that this place is so big. Someone else points out that there's a square up ahead, and another person asks what kind of innate talents the guys have. Kin Fong mentions that the others are coming out of the cabin. He goes out and adds that he will also go out and see the world outside of this cabin. The system notifies him about the place, Novice Village 911. He notes that if he fails to reach level 10, he will be eliminated, and this world is horrible because the Tiendo system is forcing them to go out and kill monsters. He expresses concern that there are only seven days for the novice test, asking what they should do and if they are really going to die here. He emphasizes that he does not want to die. He observes many people there. One person says to stop crying because it's annoying. Another person asks if crying will bring him back to the blue star. Someone expresses that all this is terrifying and asks about Kin Fong's talent. Kin Fong responds, saying he awakened an E-rank talent, super hearing. He states that he is an F-rank with a talent for speed enhancement. Another person acknowledges that it is a great talent. He also reveals that he is an F-rank but has a smell enhancement ability, which he considers could be more useful. He wonders about the world outside. The other person agrees, stating that they do not know how strong the beasts are out there, and they can't dare to make any assumptions. He asks if anyone has gone out yet to explore. Kin Fun thinks this should be the exit of the novice village, leading to a world of killing and bloodshed. He sees a portal in front, and everyone gathers in front of the portal. He wonders who will be the first to step out of the light shield. Suddenly, an explosion happens behind him. He turns back, thinking it might be a beast. Wang Kang arrives there. Kin Fun looks at him and realizes it's the guy with one-ear combat power, Wang Kang. The people gather there, happy to see him, and one person exclaims that he is amazing and so powerful. Another person asks Wang Kang about his talent. He reveals that he is a D-rank, and his talent is called Power Frenzy, which can triple his strength when he uses it. Kin Feng thinks about Wang Kong's strength index being 18, and after using his talent, it can be increased to 54, explaining why he can smash a boulder with one punch. He considers that with that kind of attack power, Wang Kong should be ranked in the top 10 in the entire novice area of 91. A person remarks that having a deranked talent explains why Wang Kong is so powerful. Another person shares that he also awakened a similar kind of strength enhancement talent and asks if Wang Kong did not, and if he can also do that. The other person reveals that he has awakened an E-rank strength enhancement talent, allowing him only to double his strength, one notch away from Wang King. The other person asks if Wang Kong is the strongest person here. The other person states that his initial battle power is at the one-star peak stage and he has awakened a D-rank talent. He believes that Wang King will surely become stronger and stronger in the future. Wang Kang agrees, thinking that all the sweat and hard work in the past has now paid off, and it is the high time of his life. A black-haired boy mentions Le Xuan, who is a C-rank, and wonders how strong he is. The other person expresses envy towards those two who have awakened C-level talents. Wang Kang thinks about what's so special about C-rank talent in this world of survival of the fittest. Having more power in their fists is what matters. He instructs everyone to listen up and announces that he is going to go out to the village to give himself a head start and see how strong the beasts are out there. The people express admiration, saying Brother Wang is so powerful and fearless and he is great. He enters the portal. Kin Feng thinks that it's all brawn and no brains, and he should only be the first one to take the lead at such a time if he is absolutely sure of his survival out there. Wang Kang abuses Luke Xuan and asserts that they should understand that only those with strong fists are the law here. He claims that when he kills a beast, he will show them who the boss is. He feels something strange and asks what that is. He states that something has definitely just passed by and asks if it is a monster. A big rabbit monster appears behind him and attacks him. The status window notifies other members outside the portal that rookie Wang King was killed by a level 1 beast, the Bloodtooth Rabbit. It shows a reminder that the battle power of level 1 beasts is assessed as 3 stars, level 2 beasts as 4 stars, level 3 beasts as 5 stars, and so on. 
A person mentions that Wang King is someone who can break boulders with one punch. Another person comments that even Wang Kang could not survive out there, so they are just walking into their own graves if they go out. Another person states that this world is too dangerous and asks how they are going to survive here. The system window notifies that combat power is evaluated based on the four-dimensional indexes only, and innate talents are not taken into account. The protective barrier in the village will keep the beasts out, but they will be able to enter the village after the newbie protection period is over. Kin Fong reflects on how Wang Kang was killed by the weakest level one beast, less than five minutes after leaving the novice village. The difficulty of survival in this world is much more incredible than he thought. Moreover, in order to prevent people from hiding in the novice village and not coming out, the Tando system also reminded everyone that the protection barrier will expire. He believes that if the Tando system has given so many hints, then it is unlikely for it to set a task for newbies that cannot be completed. There must be other ways to pass the test. He wonders about a scenario where a three-star beast faces four one-star humans and asks who will win and who will lose. A person from the crowd asserts that they can't just wait there to die. They have to kill monsters and upgrade or they will die for sure. He expresses that he does not want to die and emphasizes that he is still so young. He suggests forming teams, stating that they are stronger if they work together and have a better chance of survival. Another person agrees, saying that unity is strength and together they can overpower and kill the beasts. The first person agrees, urging everyone to come to his side if they want to team up. He suggests showing their stats and innate talent so they can work together effectively. Everyone starts talking about their rank. One person reveals that he is an E-rank awakened. Another person states that he has an innate talent for supervision. Yet another person mentions that he may have an F-rank talent, but he has a high four-dimensional index. Another person instructs everyone to draw their weapons and stay on guard. A black-haired man approaches Kin Fong and asks if he wants to join the team, noting that he has been alone. He declines, thanking him, and walks away. He thinks that working in a team is a good idea, but it's not for him. He will have to hide his innate talent before he becomes strong enough. Fifteen years have passed since the first team went in, so it's about time he enters the portal, thinking it's time for him to grind some levels. Kin Fong observes many trees and contemplates that this is how the outside world looks. He senses the primitive environment around him. He feels like a dinosaur could pounce at him from the bushes at any given moment. He detects a disgusting stench in the vicinity. Upon seeing Wang Kong covered in blood, he reflects that although Wang Kong's death results from his reckless personality, ultimately, it's due to the sudden appearance of this cruel world. After seeing the corpse, he realizes that he can die at any time in this world. He states that to survive, he needs to be careful and continue to get stronger. If he is not wrong, he decides to try and see if this would actually work. Approaching the dead body, the system notifies him that innate talent is being used for endless extraction. He absorbs the soul, and the system notifies him that endless extraction is successful. He has obtained a D-rank talent and power frenzy. He reflects that it really worked, obtaining the D-rank talent and power frenzy from Wang Kang. He acknowledges that he did manage to extract Wang Kang's innate talent. The status window notifies him of that talent, endless extraction, and power frenzy. He calculates that his strength is originally at 8, so after using power frenzy, it will burn up to 24. He realizes that he can instantly have twice the strength of an ordinary adult human. He considers this the correct use of his SSS rank innate talent, and with enough time, he will be able to possess 100s, 1000s, or 10,000s of innate talents. He reflects that with all his innate talents, he will be able to become the pinnacle of human existence and this feeling of getting stronger is exhilarating. He addresses Wang King, noting that he is very strong, but his speed and defense are mediocre, and he is reckless. He points out that Wang King did not evaluate his situation and cluelessly went outside to hunt a monster, leading to his death. Picking up Wang Kong's sword, he states that for most people, cooperation is the only way to compensate for each other's weaknesses and survive in this deadly world. But that's not the case for him. The system notifies that endless extraction is successful. It has extracted the rust and residue from his novice sword, transforming it into a refined steel sword. He thinks that with endless extraction, he will have no weaknesses. He kills the rabbit and observes that this dead ferocious beast 
is probably the rank one blood tooth rabbit that killed Wang Qiang. Looking at its injuries, he concludes that it probably died from a backstab after being surrounded by people. The system notifies him that using the innate talent of endless extraction is successful, resulting in a gain of two strength points. He notices some fog on his head and wonders if he can even gain attributes this way. With the two strength points he just gained, his strength index is now equal to that of an average adult. If he uses the power frenzy talent, his strength points would increase to 30. He considers whether by encountering more similar monsters and obtaining more strength attributes, he would be able to reach quickly and even surpass the power of Wang King. After a while, he wonders how many times he can extract. The system notifies him that he is using the innate talent of endless extraction and further notifies him that endless extraction failed. It states that those under the level of 20 can only be extracted once, and he has already reached the limit. He acknowledges that it's the same as with a novice sword, and doesn't matter as long as he can find new corpses, he will be able to use endless extraction again. He notes that the group of people must have killed a number of ferocious beasts along the way. If he follows their trail, he can probably find more corpses. It will be a lot easier to gang up on a ferocious beast with a large group of people. If he follows them, he will be able to find even more ferocious beasts. He suggests following the trail with the most footprints. The system notifies that Nub Liu has been killed by a level 1 giant rodent. He observes that one person has died, and the person who was killed was with a group. He reflects that when he was extracting from Wang Kong's corpse, he obtained his innate talent, and when he was extracting from the Bloodtooth Rabbit, he gained two attribute points. He notes that humans and beasts are different, but a level 1 beast is too weak. They do not have any innate talent and only have their physique going for them. As such, he only managed to extract some attribute points. Since that's the case, he decides to find Liu's corpse. Maybe he might get another innate talent which will be more worth it. He moves forward, stating that he is not really sure which way Liu's team may have gone. Presuming logically, he mentions that accidents are more likely to happen on a path with the least amount of people. Liu's group probably took this route, so let's look out if there are any other opportunities along the way. The system notifies that Navis Shuang was killed by a level 1 vicious beast, Rodent Giant. He remarks that another one has died, and if it was killed by the same giant rodent, then the two of them are likely to have died at the same location. He observes that the situation they are facing is much more dire than he had imagined, resulting in the consecutive deaths of two people. Hearing a voice asking if he still wants to go, he looks around, descends from the tree, and states that in this deadly world, remaining weak would lead to becoming easy prey. In this world, anyone can die at any time, and to survive, one must understand the logic that wealth comes from taking risks and facing great dangers. Spotting blood on the ground, he starts following it, searching in the grass, realizing that this is a dangerous world where one misstep can lead to death. Recognizing the extreme danger of his destination, he starts running, sensing that the blood stench around him is getting stronger, indicating the nearby presence of danger. He comes across an unconscious man on the ground, like Lu Chen, who was killed by the giant rodent. Noticing another lifeless body, he assumes it to be Liu's. Aware that the giant rodent is likely nearby, he acknowledges that under normal circumstances he is no match for it, since a level 1 ferocious beast has the combat power of a 3-star, while his combat power is at 1-star. Seeing something strange, he thinks, what the hell? Observing a giant rodent, he identifies it as the level 1 giant rodent. Acknowledging that the combat power of a level 1 beast is 3-stars, and his own combat power is 1-star, he recognizes that under normal circumstances, he is currently no match for it. Fortunately, both of its legs are broken and it is severely injured, making it easier to kill. Moving stealthily, he positions himself to attack it. The system notifies him that his innate talent, Power Frenzy, is being used. The giant rodent attempts to attack him with its hand, but he swiftly cuts it with his sword, remarking that an animal will always be an animal, with limits on how smart they can be. He throws and stabs his sword into the rodent, then uses his power to punch it with full force. After successfully killing the giant rodent, he reflects on the unexpected danger of sneaking up on a severely damaged giant rodent. He admits to underestimating its awareness, and resolves to be more cautious moving forward. Observing some smoke emanating from the rodent corpse, he inquires about what's happening. 
the system notifies him that he successfully killed the level 1 rodent and gained 30 energy points. Feeling the warmth around his hand, he senses the power acquired from slaying the level 1 beast, as though his fatigue has dissipated. The system window appears, detailing his level, abilities, and stats. He notes that after killing the giant rodent, his level 1 status, initially at 0, has progressed to level 1 100, retrieving his sword from the rodent's body. He considers it a good start and then absorbs the soul. The system notifies that his innate talent, Endless Extraction, is being used, and Extraction is successful. He has gained two agility stat points. Acknowledging that his agility has now risen to 11 points, he recognizes that he has become stronger. However, he remarks that the attribute points obtained from the Level 1 Wild Beast are insufficient, and expresses his intention to target Level 2 Wild Beasts once he becomes stronger. He then focuses on his primary objective. The system notifies that the extraction is successful, and he has obtained an F-rank talent, Enhanced Smelling Sense. Recognizing it as the lowest level talent, and one of the six sensory enhancements, specifically enhancing the sense of smell, the system further notifies that this talent increases his sense of smell tenfold when used. Though considered trash by others, he finds it extremely useful, especially in the dense forest where finding corpses can be challenging. With this talent, he can locate corpses based on their distinctive smell. Taking off Xu Chang's shirt and placing it on the ground, he explains that this talent allows him to detect the scent of wild beasts from afar, enabling him to avoid danger preemptively. He emphasizes the timely acquisition of this skill, noting that only an hour has passed since the test started yet his strength and agility have already reached the standards of an adult human. Placing his sword on Su Chang's shirt, he performs some magical operation on it. Considering the three other talents he acquired, his overall battle power should now be at two stars, possibly peaking at the upper limit of two stars. However, the Chanda system panel assesses battle power solely based on the four-dimensional index, indicating that superficially his battle power remains at one star. The system notifies the success of Endless Extraction, transforming his novice sword into a refined steel sword by extracting rust and residue. Reflecting on this, he concludes that the battle power assessment should be regarded as a reference rather than relied upon too heavily. Securing his sword in place, he declares, it's time to move. Activating the enhanced sense of smell, the status screen displays its activation he harnesses his power, tuning into the scent of corpses. Despite the tenfold strengthening of his sense of smell, he grapples with the overwhelming stench, reminding himself to relax and acclimate gradually. Distinct scents start to emerge, and he identifies the light fragrance of mud and the aroma of flowers. Catching a whiff of another human smell, he senses that something is nearby. Meanwhile, a giant rodent stalks a group of survivors. They corner it coordinating their efforts to attack and ultimately kill it. The system window notifies them of their success, indicating the acquisition of plus 30 energy points. One of them mentions the group's misfortune in encountering two giant rodents simultaneously, catching them off guard. Another person acknowledges the injuries sustained by everyone, lamenting the unfortunate deaths of their two teammates, Liu and Xuang. Someone credits their boss for devising a strategy to fight while retreating, successfully luring and surrounding the rodent, preventing further casualties. Eager to capitalize on the wounded giant rodent, they express the urgency to reach it before others do. Simultaneously, Kin Fun conceals himself behind some grass, observing their conversation. He deduces that Liu and Shuang, the individuals mentioned, correspond to the woman in black and the hefty chef he recently extracted. Realizing that he has just killed the giant rodent they intended to target, he decides it's prudent to leave before potentially encountering trouble with them. The system notifies that the innate talent is being employed, activating speed enhancement. He swiftly moves using his power and acknowledges that in this world of bloodshed, virtues like mercy and humility will only jeopardize his survival. Recognizing the necessity to do everything within his capability to stay alive, he apologizes for his actions. Observing the situation, he remarks that for more than three hours, while others were diligently hunting beasts, he explored the novice planes to comprehend the environment. He identifies five types of level one beasts on the novice planes, 
giant rodents, bloodfang rabbits, prairie gay wolves, berserk boars, and the highly venomous nine-ringed snake. He notes that the extracted berserk boar is the fourth one he has encountered. The system interjects, notifying that the extraction limit has been reached, resulting in extraction failure. It provides a reminder that after three successful extractions of the same level one beast, the extraction limit will be reached. He states that aside from the highly poisonous nine-ringed snake, he has already extracted other beasts three times. It appears that he will need to focus on finding highly venomous nine-ringed snakes from now on. The Tonda has announced a total of seven deaths in the past hours, but he has only found this one corpse in front of him. He mentions that, in comparison to the attribute points of wild beasts, human talents are more challenging to obtain. The system notifies that innate talent is being used for endless extraction. It confirms that endless extraction is successful, and he has gained the E-rank talent, vision enhancement. He views his details on the status window. He declares that his combat power has finally reached two stars, and he is confident he will be able to solo a level one wild beast. He notices some smoke and identifies it as the stench of a highly venomous nine-ringed snake. He quickly moves and also detects another scent, which is somewhat floral or fruity. He discreetly observes a snake dragon coiled around a tree. There it is, he observes, recognizing it as the same fragrance he had smelled earlier. He notes that it is a highly poisonous nine-ringed snake, guarding it with such a fragrance and a fierce beast protecting it. The fruit appears to be of extraordinary origin, the venomous nine-ringed serpent is the strongest level one beast in the novice planes, and the only level one beast capable of providing energy attribute points. He expresses satisfaction, saying, what a good harvest, and draws out his sword. The snake notices him, making him think he has been discovered. As the snake moves to attack him, he quickly sidesteps, pondering the reason for its slow movements. He considers the possibility that the snake might be sluggish because it has recently consumed its prey and is currently digesting it. As he moves into attack, he realizes he can't cut through it. Its scales are too hard. He is struck by the snake, causing him to fall. The system notifies that innate talent is being utilized in a power frenzy. He thrusts his sword into the snake's mouth, slicing it into pieces, and remarks, 40 energy points in hand. I just need to kill one more level 1 beast to advance to level 2. He acknowledges that, were it not for the bulging belly of the venomous nine-ringed snake, he wouldn't have been able to dispatch it so swiftly. He suggests, let's cut its belly open and see what's inside. Upon cutting open the snake's belly, he discovers a hand and exclaims, it is a human. In this world of chaos, anyone and everyone can meet their demise. The only distinction lies in the manner of their death. The predator preys upon its victims, and the survival of the fittest is the governing rule of this world. He absorbs the soul of his fallen foe. The status window then notifies that the endless extraction is successful, and he has acquired the same talent again for a second vision enhancement. It informs him that both talents of the same enhancement type are automatically combined. The vision talent has been upgraded to a rank E talent, and the vision enhancement has increased by 20 times granting night vision. The notification further states that the talent upgrade is successful and the talent skill has been awakened. The Eye of True Sight. Eyes of True Sight is an active skill that allows one to see through the nature of things. Curious about talent upgrades and the Eyes of True Sight, he speculates that obtaining multiple instances of the same talent increases the chance of the extracted talent leveling up, and there is also a high probability of awakening. He remarks that the Eye of True Sight is his first skill. The system notifies him about the details and effects of the Red Viper Fruit. He mentions that it can instantly analyze the details of the spiritual fruit, akin to those high-end scanning devices in sci-fi movies. He states that with this skill, he will be able to identify all kinds of unknown things, providing a significant advantage in gathering resources in the future. Plucking the fruit, he eats it and declares that he won't overlook any nice stuff from now on. The system notifies that the Red Viper fruit has been consumed, resulting in eight points of physique attribute gained. Additionally, the poison resistance has increased by 100% due to the consumption of the Red Viper fruit. Notes that eight attribute points are equivalent to extracting from four wild beasts. He expresses satisfaction with a good heart, harvest of the Red Viper fruit, but laments that there's only one. He wonders if there is any other use for this spiritual herb. 
he employs his power to examine the Red Viper herb details, and the system notifies him about its description as a spiritual herb grown from absorbing the essence of heaven and earth. It grows one leaf in a year, seven leaves in seven years, and red fruit in another seven years. The fruit is called the Red Viper fruit, and its characteristic is that after the Red Viper fruit is picked, the grass will wither automatically and become worthless after a few days. He comments on the spiritual herb's growth, from essence absorption to fruit bearing, and decides to try extraction on it. Plucking the flower, the system notifies him that the innate talent ability activates endless extraction, and the process is successful. Obtaining the essence of the spiritual herb and consuming it will grant him two points of physique attribute. He affirms that a spiritual herb capable of bearing the red viper fruit couldn't be worthless. It could be equivalent to the attribute points extracted from the corpse of a wild beast. Consuming the seed, the system congratulates him, stating that his combat level has reached the two-star peak level. The system displays his details and increases level 170D100. He expresses surprise at his combat level reaching the two-star peak so soon, especially when combined with the four talents he acquired from extraction. He mentions that he can even attempt to fight three to four level one wild beasts on his own, he has decided to extract one more poisonous nine-ringed snake, and then he will leave the Novice Valley. He expresses his intention to head to a larger area to seek new wild beasts, kill them, and enhance his strength. His goal is to become a strong individual and survive in this world. Suddenly, some stones come towards him, but he swiftly moves aside, causing the stones to strike the floor and explode. He realizes that someone has ambushed him. He runs from the location and climbs to the top of a tree where he spots a giant snake. He observes and remarks that it looks like that's not the case. It's a poisonous nine-ringed snake. No wonder he did not sense it. The smell of the blood from the previous snake had masked the scent from this one. He notes that it just appeared when he was about to go look for it. A group of survival attack snakes and a bald man instructs him to eat his sword. The other person mentions that it's moving too quickly, making it hard to aim properly. Another individual suggests aiming for its vital points. He attacks and declares that he will go to hell. He will take revenge for his brother, Chen Jun. Kin Fong expresses surprise at unexpectedly running into him here. Just then, Liu identifies himself as Liu, a D rank talent awakener with lightning control as his innate talent. He invites those who want to form a team with him to come to his side. Liu mentions that only 17 ranked D talents have awoken in the novice village after the death of Wang Kang, and Liu is one of the remaining 16. He recalls leaving the novice village after forming a team of eight members. The snake hits Liu, and Liu Yan approaches him, asking if he is all right. Liu reassures him not to worry and urges him to finish off the snake now that it has lost its mobility. The bald man suggests they leave. Kin Fong directs Liu to take charge, with the other six backing him up from the sides. He believes the poisonous nine-ringed snake will be weakened throughout the fight, and it's only a matter of time before it is killed. Kin Fong mentions he has not tried using the Eye of True Sight to scan a living wild beast and wants to see what kind of information he can obtain. He checks the snake details on the system window, noting the drop rate is 0.1%. He questions if that means it will drop items when killed, but the 11,000 rate is very low. He sees the light coming towards him and asks what's going on. The survivors successfully kill the snake, and one person remarks that he got five energy points, while another says he only received three. Zoli, the boy, mentions that he only got one and questions if his contribution was that low. Lu Yan instructs him to stop complaining, explaining that the points distribution is based on their contribution, making it fair. He adds that he can only blame himself for being weak. Kin Fong descends from the tree, noting that this is how points are distributed when forming a squad. He commends Tandal for encouraging people to work together. He observes that the 40 energy points from just one nine snake aren't much for seven people to share. He notices Lu and asks what's going on with him. Lu is surrounded by magic, and when asked, he simply replies that he has leveled up. His teammate inquires about what's wrong, and another person asks what's happening. Liu clarifies that nothing is wrong, he just leveled up. The bald man expresses amazement, noting that Liu has actually reached level 2. Zoli remarks that he is only at 1700, emphasizing that there is still a long way to go to reach level 2. Liu reassures him not to be sad, asserting that as long as they work together, 
they will be able to survive in this cruel world. Kin Feng observes them and remarks that this is the first time he has seen a level 2 human. He wonders how significant the difference will be from level 1. He opens the system and decides to check with the eye of true sight. The system window provides him with details about level 2 humans. After reviewing the information, he comments, that's it? He notes that with those stats and his D-rank talent, Lu's overall strength is barely at 3 stars. Even though Leiju is not yet level 2, his combat level is at the 2-star peak. This should place his strength around 4 stars when combined with all his talents. Kin Feng concludes that Lu can easily defeat level 2 Lu, even though Lu is only at level 1. On the other side, a little boy approaches Le Jie's boss and informs him that Lei has leveled up. He suggests going to avenge their brother, who is from Chen Jun, who is still in that snake's stomach. The boss inquires about what happened to Chen Jun. The boy explains that while scouting the path together, they encountered two poisonous nine-ringed snakes in the forest up ahead. They turned to run as soon as they saw the snakes, but Chen Jun missed a step, fell, and got swallowed by one of the snakes. Fortunately, the boy had awakened speed talent and managed to lead the other snake away. Determined to avenge Chen Jun, he urges them to go, and everyone follows him, staying in formation, watching out for each other, and alerting the others when he senses any danger. After a while, Kin Fong hid behind a tree and observed them moving. He speculates that the one in the snake's stomach is their teammate, Chen Jun, and they are searching for the snake that he just killed. Liu Yan senses him throws an arrow toward him and demands to know who goes there. The arrow hits the tree, and he barely saves himself. She says to come out. Kin Fong thinks it seems like the girl is an awakener with a good sense of hearing. He comes out and assures her not to worry, he is just passing by. She recognizes him and he asks if she knows him. Unable to recall, this girl, Le Jun, inquires if she knows him, and she says no, she doesn't. It's just that she has seen his candid picture in the chat room before. Kin Fong reflects that there are more than a thousand people in the chat room, and if her memory is that good, it seems weird. She asks why he is all alone in the wild, expressing concern about the danger. He agrees and thinks about why they are not leaving. Once they leave, he will then extract the corpse of that giant snake. She asks if Kin Fun can join their team, since they can only survive here by teaming up. She adds that, now that they have lost Chen Jun, if Kin Feng joins their group, he will fill the gap. Kin Feng contemplates the significant gap between humans and wild beasts, acknowledging that humans stand little chance against them if they were to fight alone. Teaming up with each other is, therefore, the natural course of action. He anticipates the establishment of various forces on this land in the near future, and recognizes the need for more people to be part of his team in order to stand firm. Le Jun agrees and Kin Fun proceeds to show them his attributes and talent, as long as they are not too bad. Le Jun is willing to accept him into his team. Kin Fong acknowledges the necessity of establishing his own force quickly, but he maintains composure, not revealing his eagerness for others to join his team. As a level 2, the Y Yen suggests that Kin Fun only show his information to Boss Li, emphasizing that he is fortunate to be considered for their group as an expert with a D-rank innate talent. The little boy concurs, stating that following Boss Lei will be beneficial for Kin Fong in the future. Kin Fong declines, expressing a preference for solo endeavors. The girl asks what's going on, but Lejan intervenes, suggesting they not force Kin Fong and let him go.